Electronic prescription of controlled substances uh, essentially allows providers to more easily get medications that patients need to those that need that, but also creates a transparent environment that is audible and DEA compliant, so it makes it more difficult for those trying to divert or abuse these medications. Uh, the DEA passed a ruling back in 2010 which allows providers and institutions to prescribe substances electronically, controlled substances, but those requirements are actually quite stringent. Every aspect of the technology needs to be certified by the DEA. That's everything from pre-enrollment, supervised enrollment of providers, all the way through each different component, including the electronic medical record component, the e-prescription, prescription writing module, any authentication software and hardware that's used to verify that a prescriber is actually prescribing that medication, and SureScripts, which is the routing of that medication to pharmacies, and pharmacies also need to be having a certified technology platform in place. So that whole thing from stem to stern needs to be completely certified in order for the system to be compliant with the DEA standards that were put into place back in 2010. Uh, the proportion that are on board for electronic prescriptions of controlled substances is less than 1% across the country, although over 80% of pharmacies are now ready to accept those prescriptions. I think the growth curve has more than doubled in the prior year, and we're at a tipping point. It's actually a very exciting point in the maturation of this technology. We've seen huge adoption of electronic prescription of non-controlled substances. So many providers and patients are very comfortable with these workflows and the technologies as they are set up. The extra layer of putting in compliance with DEA regulation for controlled substances has been technically challenging, but many vendors in the space are actually catching up due to the iStop law in New York State, which is requiring as of March 27th in 2016 that all prescriptions, controlled and non-controlled, be sent electronically. This has been a real forcing factor for many, many vendors and hospital systems and practices to be compliant. And so we're actually seeing an incredible, almost exponential growth in the amount of places that are starting to use electronic systems for controlled substances. But again, this is very early days at this point. I think my advice to any provider and any IT or administrator trying to um, roll out these systems is keep in mind that systems need to be both secure and convenient. The security aspect needs to pass muster as far as the DEA regulations and it also needs to be actually usable by the end user, by which I mean it needs to integrate into existing workflows or projected future workflows for the providers and the prescribers and the patients. Part of doing that is working with your EMR systems, your healthcare systems, other software vendors that provide security and authentication methods like fingerprint or token systems, even hands-free secure systems that are being developed to make it actually usable and convenient for providers, nurses, patients, as well as secure and compliant with DEA regulations. I think that in summary, I would say that there are there's a big difference between good technology and just technology. Um, I think that good technology can be a separator in this space. It can really help users um, do what they want to do, which is prescribe medications to people who are in pain and really need that medication, but prevent those that are trying to divert or abuse medications, prevent them from, from getting those medications out on the streets. Um, there are over 260 million prescriptions written per year for painkillers. That's enough for one bottle for just about every adult American in this country on a yearly basis. That's too much. There's a lot of talk out there about how to curb this opiate epidemic and as a gateway into heroin and other drugs of abuse, currently killing more people in this country than car accidents, gun and knife wounds 
combined. And as an ER doctor, I see this daily. We need to get at the problem upstream at the prescribing process, not just later through PMP prescription monitoring programs or, you know, um, efforts by the DEA to go back and try to find uh, misbehaviors who are, who are sending these medicines out there. It needs to happen upstream at the prescribing process to really make a difference.